Hello folks, welcome back to Dave's Allotment Garden. I'm standing in the wildlife area under the shade of the tree because it's very warm today. Boiling in fact. I'll be doing some work but I think it'll mostly be in the shade today. Anyway, I've just been to get a drink of water but I'll tell you about that later. First of all, thanks for watching, commenting, liking and subscribing and all that kind of thing. It's been a while but I'm back. Check it out, crack on. Well folks, it's an absolute scorch out of day. Too hot for me, I tell you. I think I'll be working in the shade today. But before I do crack on, there's a couple of things I want to tell you, which is interesting. Well, one of them is, um, I'll tell you about that first. The reason why I had the bowl of water is because the other day I was here doing a bit tidying up and I heard this noise, which I'd never heard before, coming from like the greenhouse area, you know. And I was thinking, what's that? So I went to investigate. I thought it was a bird or something like trapped in the greenhouse at first because it was going like, eek, eek, like that, you know? And I was like, what the hell? So I went over anyway and I spotted just next to the water butt in the greenhouse, there's a little, I've got a, a scaffold board round and there's a little gap at the bottom. Now, wasn't that just a, a baby hedgehog there? And I was like, oh no. So I didn't know what to do at first because it was I couldn't get my hand in to get it out and it was panicking. Um, so I went round the other side of the water butt to see if there was anything else there before I lifted it so the hedgehog could get underneath. And I noticed on the other side was one of the parent hedgehogs obviously trying to get to its baby on the other side. So I was lifting it up. And I managed, it was a full water, but must have been like, you know, adrenaline, adrenaline rush. <laughs> and I lifted it up and the, the baby hedgehog got back from underneath. I was praying it got under because, you know, I can't hold it for very much longer. I didn't want to crush it. Anyway, it got underneath and it got away and the parent went away with it. But the thing is, it was sunny, hot, middle of the day. And I know hedgehogs aren't supposed to be out at that time of day. Um, so I don't know if they'll be all right. But he has the interesting part right next to the water butt. I'll show you later. Right next to the water butt is uh, an old lavender bush, which is old, woody, past its sell by. Anyway, this other little this baby hedgehog was running round, still going eek eek like as if it was frightened or something and I was looking because there was a few bits of metal I didn't want it to hurt itself so I was taking the, the sharp bits of metal away and all that and uh, I noticed underneath the lavender lo and behold was another male uh, well uh, another parent hedgehog with two babies and they were asleep. I mean, the hedgehogs, were, the babies were only about that big. Fully developed, but very small. There's a cabbage white butterfly right next to us here. Landed on me coal, Rabbi. Um, it's putting us off. Yeah, so I've got a family of hedgehogs on the allotment, folks. Two parents and three babies. I just hope they're all right. I have been putting water down. Ho ho hopefully they'll be getting a drink, especially in this weather they need drink in this weather like so I've been putting water down quite regular since I've noticed they were there and I've just looked before there there's no signs of them under the bush but the good sign is the ones that were under the lavender bush that that butterfly's gonna get it in a minute like <laughs> um get away I'm not frightened of them it's just I don't want them to, oh there's two of them there now Right, anyway, I'm drifting off the point. The the good thing I noticed is that the other parent... I wish you could see that on camera. Go on, fly, fly that way. <laughs> oh, there's about ten of them. Anyway, like I say, the only good thing I can see is that the other parent and the other two hedgehogs were fast asleep, which is good because they come out at daytime. But... 
I've just looked at that before, they're not there. I don't know if I've disturbed them or what. I don't know. Is there any hedgehog experts out there? That's what I want to know. What do I do? Do I just leave them? I was thinking about building a box because I don't know if they go back there every year, you know. I'd rather build a box for them than a, just underneath like a, an old uh, lavender bush. Anyway, I'll show you that later. The other thing I want to tell you before I crack in, uh, before I crack on is, I got a letter off the council the other week saying my plot is untidy. <laughs> now I know there's quite a few of you are going to go, well it is, <laughs> and I, um, <clears throat> but the thing is I get this letter every year and the, what happens is they do an inspection, they don't come into the gardens, they just walk up the path. Now when you're walking up my path the first thing you see is the wildlife area and to the untrained eye that looks like weeds it's a mess so I've, I've I've tidied it up a bit we'll see what happens that's all I can do so I am gonna be tidying up around there a little bit and somewhere shady today <laughs> bit too hot for a cuppa just got myself a bottle of uh, fizzy pop <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't, what do you call it on this channel? I have no paid production. Ah, but it, it gets to your thirst fast. <laughs> right, so you're probably all gone, yeah, my, yeah, you've, you've probably switched off by now. But anyway, I'll crack on. See that there? <laughs> Did you see it? It's going to fly past again. Anyway, I've got some uh, other interesting things to show you later on as well. So, like I say, I'll crack on. See you in a bit. Right, folks, well, I've found a part of the garden that's in semi-shade, which needs a good tidying up. So, I'm going to do that. I'll crack on. I've got my gloves. And I'll tell you what, these have been in the greenhouse and they're, they're hotter than a cup of tea. It's hotter than the sun. <laughs> and I've got my secateurs just in case I need to cut anything and all that kind of thing. So I'll crack on, see you in a bit. Uh, text coming in already on 81333. Uh, let's uh, take a look at this one. Um, it's Dave at the allotment. Allotment Dave. Well folks, it's still boiling hot, but I've been cracking on. As you can see, there's a pile of weeds there that can just dry out nicely. I've been all the way along the fence there, all the way along to that gooseberry. And there's a pile there, which I did the other day, which is nice and dry now, as is this pile down here. So, what I've been doing, I've also had a bit of a tidy up round here. I've made another pile. So I might have a little fire. I know the wind's blowing in the wrong direction, like. But I'm just going to burn a little few dry weeds and that's it. See what happens. See how far I get. But before I do that, but before I do what I was going to do, I'll show you what else I've been doing. Like I say, there's a pile of weeds. I've went in between all the potatoes, all the way around the back here. Weed free, apart from that sunflower there, like, but that can stay there. So the other job I want to do today is get the rest of these Charlotte potatoes out. Because you can see they're all dying back there now. They're not going to grow much more, so I'll have a quick sit down in the shade and then I'll crack on and get these potatoes out. Charlotte potato reveal number two. Mr. Gardner Man, Mr. Gardner Man, 
Well, as you can see, the Charlotte potatoes are out. Hello! Hello, everybody! <laughs> there they are, there. Let's get out of the... Out of the light there, so we can have a look. Not bad at all, them, like. Not bad at all. Once again, clean. No need for washing. Well, you know, a little bit of washing, just to get the soil off, but... Perfect them like once again like the other day there's some small ones but the mostly that big quite a few I'll get them on the scales eh? be a professional so I crack on Right, let's get these potatoes weighed. Here are the Charlottes. This is the only bag I could find. All in there, lovely. There's the scales. Now I don't know if I'll be able to do this with one hand without spilling them all over. But I'll give it a shot, just for use. Uh, balance, right. Heavy them, like. <laughs> right, just to show you if you can see. It's on zero. No, it's not, so I'll just uh, move it. There, that's it. It's on zero now, folks. So I'll get these potatoes balanced in one hand and get them on top of here. Now, with this mushroom tray, weighs 200 grams or something so let's see what we've got here can you see that I don't know if you can see that folks so you'll have to take my word for it it is 5 kilo 400 grams which means it's 5 kilo 200 grams there that'll do me not bad for seven plants. What would that be? Three, three or four of them 30 litre buckets. Soil or buckets, you decide. Right, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna have a cup of folks. See you in a bit. Right folks, that's me done for the day. I've had enough. I just thought I'd start you in the path just to let, show you what the council will see and what they call untidy. I have done a little bit tidying up like so I don't think it's too bad let us know what you think um, I've got my stupid gardening hat on I wish I'd thought of this I forgot I had this folks I've been sweating all day and I could have had this lovely cool hat on anyway I'll spin you around right so like I say the council all they do when they do the allotment checks is walk up the path and have a look in over the fence so like I say if you look over this fence here, it looks like a right mess to some people, but it's not. It's called a wildlife area. Got me nice uh, clematis, which has come to an end there. So let's go and have a look to see what's in the wildlife area. Cherry trees, brambles. <laughs> I've been cutting the brambles back actually. 
That down there used to be a bug hotel, which the council are trying to get you to make these days. Um, that that sink, that'll be worth a bit. I was going to make a little water feature out of that. I might still do, and I don't, I don't know. There's rhubarb down there. There's all sorts, like I says, it's a pond, it's a wildlife area. This is an apple tree with apples on it. The pond has got lilies in. I, I shouldn't have to explain to everybody. People who watch me videos should know. This is a golden rod. Got a lovely, nice bush of mock orange there. And next to the holly tree and all of the blackberries and this hebe which get the, it all gets cut down when it needs to be cut down there's a pond pond down there now that kind of thing loads of these raspberries but the, it's anything in the wildlife area the birds get one day though I, I really do need to trim this uh, cherry tree back because it's far too big now really I didn't expect it to get that big. It was only about six inches when I planted it. There's a couple more roses coming on there. Well, dying off now. So that's canny. And we're coming into the, the rest of the garden. The weed piles <laughs> at the minute they are anyway. But remember down here, folks, me hedge, me hedgerow which consists of hawthorn and hazel. That's doing all right. That'll be dividing, eventually that'll divide the wildlife area from the fruit and vegetable area. So we'll have a walk around here. Like I say, I've, that's, a, that's the weeds there that I've got from this bit here. I'll give it a dig over when the ground's not so solid. It hasn't rained for a long time, like a proper good soaking. That's what the ground needs. So that should dry out no, no time at all. I was going to have a fire the day, but the wind keeps blowing over towards the garage and they'll just end up phoning the fire brigade, like they always do. Uh, and there's another pile down there. These onions down here seem to have picked up, so I'll just leave them, see what happens in these Stena runner beans. Doing all right. The uh, sweet corn picked up since the last time. Who knows if I'll get any corn off like it might be a bit too late, but who knows? Right, the plan is, see that pile there? That's gonna be the fire pile. I'll just let everything die down here, uh, rot down a bit and it'll be perfect, just burn. Then all of the goodness can go back into the soil. The taties, they're doing all right. I've given everything a good soak. I don't know how people who haven't got access to a hose manages, because I've spent 45 minutes at least watering this bit, and that was with a hose. So imagine that. Right, let's have a look under this net. What's going on there? Can you see down there is a broccoli? You can't really see from there, like. Let's have a look this way. Oops, sorry, sorry about that, folks. There, there's some broccoli starting there. I've been getting some kale pickings from there. And the cabbages are doing all right. Everything's doing all right, which I've, which has been planted this year, but it's a lot tidier. I know for a fact it is, especially along that edge of the fence there. I've tidied up all the weeds from there, and that's what that pile is. Busy, busy. Right, what else I'm going to show you is the flower section. Look at the, this uh, rose, first of all. Just keeps on blooming. I have been deadheading it. Just keeps coming back. Thing is, they get too top heavy and they start falling over like that. 
but it's always covered. Every rose has a thorn. Annie's rose here. Always covered. Now I'll take it. I'll show you around here first, folks, because uh, I'll sign off next to me chair. Over there. Right. The other day I was here. And I, well, I was over there actually. Over there. Sit, well, there. Sitting and I could hear like a, a squeaking noise, like I said earlier. And uh, I was like, what the hell? I thought it was a bird in the greenhouse. But then I noticed. There was a, I've blocked it off now, like just in case, but down there, there was a little baby hedgehog, tiny little thing, and it got stuck. It was stuck there and it was going beep, 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 la la, doing its noise. Um, I'll sort that out later. So, like I say, this was full and it was, it's quite heavy, like, so I had to sort of pull it with all my strength. But before I did that, I had a look down here. And you see where that plastic bag is in the corner? Just down there, there was a one of the parents trying to get access to the hedgehog, you know? So I just arrived this. I, I don't know where I got the strength from. And I was holding it, and I was thinking, please get out, I, I don't want to drop this on you. Anyway, it got out. The parent and the little baby went up there somewhere, but it was still making a sort of noise. There was loads of spiky bits of metal, like, you know, uh, metal poles and stuff. I didn't want to hurt it, so as I was t taking away them, I looked under here. And they've gone now, like. But there, were, there was two other well there was another parent and two other babies down there they were fully developed like and but and they were asleep so i don't know what to do here folks do they come back every year to where they've made a little nest or what because if they do i don't know what to do i don't want to leave that there like that all the time but I'd like to make a little box for it or something. If anybody's got any suggestions about what to do about these hedgehogs, which were nesting under there. So I've got a family of two adults and three baby hedgehogs at the allotment. So that's canny. Right, we'll have a quick look in this greenhouse. I'll tell you what, when I first come and opened this door, my glasses steamed up and I was standing like two foot away. <laughs> Cucumber. Doing all right. Tomatoes, I've just let them go really this, this year. I haven't really concentrated on them, but there's a few on there. And the, on this side as well, some of them are starting to turn red. It's been ne neglected, the straw here, the tomatoes. But look at this, folks, while I'm here, man, the, the grapes. Unbelievable. Loads of bunches on. And like I say, I've went round and thinned it all out as well. So, we'll have to see what happens. Grapes. Right then, I'm going to go over there, finish my coffee. It was a bit uh, warm before, like, it might have cooled down by now. Oh, I haven't finished. I haven't finished yet, folks. We've got the the pièce de résistance coming up. So this round here, look. This isn't the pièce de résistance, but I'm pleased though. That is an apple on Alex's memorial apple tree. Get in and look at that. Them astas have picked up, and so is the dahlias that I put in. So that's all right. But this is the first. Hey, that looks pretty thing. Come in, ready? Sunflower, number one. Di -di -di -di. I'll see if I can get it round into the sun. I'll just focus in on it there, folks, so you got a good view. That's the first one. 
Isn't that nice? It's weird how it's facing away from the sun. Well, that looks cool. And here, this is the best one this side. This is amazing, folks. Amazing. Look at that. Can you see? Chocolate. Why is it facing away from the sun? Hey, look at that. Isn't that nice, folks? That's the chocolate one. It's really, well, chocolate colour. <laughs> I suppose that's why it's called a chocolate sunflower. Yeah, so they're, they're getting quite tall now. Right, I'll spin you around, I'll sit on the seat and I'll sign off there. See you in a bit. Folks, I'm getting ahead of myself. There's something else I want to show you as well, which is interesting. Look at these as well. These astas and dahlias I've picked up next to the sunflowers. But that's not what I was going to show you. Remember last week, or on the last video I made, I was asked if anybody knew what that was. Can't really see it there in the shade, but... My sister and her husband were up for a few days the other, the other last week there, well this week. So they come over, um, Paul has got an app which identifies plants. And he identified this plant folks, do you know what it is? Now I don't know where it come from, but it is actually a Mexican sunflower. So there you go. I wonder what that's going to look like. Mexican sunflower. Interesting. Right, I'm going to sign off for sure this time. See you in a bit. Right, folks, that's it. I'm away. It's half five now. I've been here for five and a half hours. I think that's enough tidying for one day. It's blazing hot. Can it take no more? So, there's only one more thing to say. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking and subscribing and all that kind of thing. I hope everybody's gardens are doing well and uh, I hope you're all enjoying this sunshine. It's a bit too hot for me but I, I'm not complaining. Could do, a, do with a rain dance like, who fancies doing a rain dance? <laughs> anyway, I used to play songs sometimes on my guitar but YouTube now doesn't allow you, unless you own the music, to have, you're not allowed to put any music on unless you own it. Which, uh, which is a compliment to me really, because when I'm singing Pink Floyd songs and stuff, I don't think it sounds like Pink Floyd, but according to YouTube, it does. So, no more singing of original songs, unless it's by me. So I'm going to leave you on one of my songs I wrote 10 years ago, 12 years ago in fact folks. It's, uh, it's quite fitting for the time of year. I've got my guitar here. I just hope I can remember the words and how to play it and all that. Excuse me folks, I need to burp. <coughs> ah, that's better. Right, I'll leave you on a song called Summer Days by the DLR Project, which is me. Laters. Early morning, a new day is dawning, I reach for the sky. Sunny weather, I can tell we're together Feeling so high Always lately Feeling lazy over you Summer days
kadu so mati okay folks thanks for watching now lad and i'll see you on the next one